going on? Kyle Welcher here. We're out here fishing today and it's a transitional time of year, so we have a lot of different rods laid out on the front deck with a ton of different baits. And I just wanna take a second to let y'all know exactly why I pick the exact rod for the technique or the type of cover I'm fishing or why I pick the rod for the exact application that I pick it for. I've built a lot of rods in my time. I used to fish with rods that I built all the time and I would get super detail oriented. I would change the guide sizes for the type of line I was going to use. I would change the, uh, the hook keeper based on the baits I was going to use. But one thing that never changed is there are certain actions and powers that work best for certain techniques. And to simplify it as best as I possibly can, you just want to gauge the power of the rod to the gauge of the wire of the hook that you're going to be actually using. So if you're going to use like a crankbait with a super thin wire hook, like this right here is a Spro Little John with some, some thin wire gamakatsu hooks on it, I don't want a powerful rod because this hook can't stand that, you know, this hook will bend if this rod's too powerful because it's not that thick of a hook. So to keep it as simple as possible, you want to try to scale and match your power to the actual gauge of the hook of the bait that you're fishing. Now, cranking is one of those things, and everybody knows you hear about cranking rods being, you know, special and you got to have a different rod for cranking and all that type of stuff. Basically what that means is the actual action on this rod, which means the tip of the rod, is going to load a little bit deeper into the rod. So whereas like a good jig rod might only load to the third or fourth guide, this rod really has a parabolic bend all the way down deep into the rod like this. And what that's gonna do is whenever you do have these thin wire hooks, you know, if you rip a hole in the fish's mouth and they shake their head, the, this bait weighs a lot compared to the size of the hooks that we, we have. So when that fish is shaking his head, this bait's shaking back and forth. And these small hooks, if it gets any slack in the line, they can throw that bait out of their mouth. So in my opinion, the most important rod to match correctly is one where you're gonna throw a medium or small size crankbait with some smaller treble hooks. So that's why you wanna use a moderate rod. You wanna make sure that line stays tight when they're shaking their head with these treble hooks. And you can use a moderate rod for a lot of different applications. You know, I use this exact same rod in, in a little bit stiffer power for a lot of vibrating jigs, spinner baits, your bigger crankbaits, you know, your big lipless crankbaits, all that type of stuff. I'll use a moderate action rod for that because if I'm just winding with it, I want to give that fish a little bit longer whenever they bite that, bite that bait and I set the hook, that moderate action rod is going to get to the backbone just a little bit slower, gives that fish just a half a second longer to get that bait a little bit better before I set the hook, and I'm going to have a lot better load to the rod so when I'm fighting that fish, have a little bit more room for error. If you're going to use a super fast action rod, like this rod right here, which is a flipping rod, this is a seven foot six heavy fast, this is a rod that I'm going to be flipping with you have a little bit less room for error when you're fishing with a rod like this. This is a rod that's designed for big line, big baits, thrown in heavy cover, topwater frogs, all that type of stuff. And whenever you set the hook on this rod, the rod doesn't load nearly as deep. The rod's really only going to load to about the fifth guide, and it really turns into straight backbone. You can see how it has an actual completely different action. The actual bend is called the action of the rod. The power is how much like power it takes to actually load that rod. So this rod has a lot less bend to the tip. What that means is when I set the hook with this rod, I'm gonna move a lot more line. If I'm using braid, I'm gonna be able to cut the vegetation a little bit better because this rod's gonna be a little bit stiffer. And I'm gonna be able to move that fish and actually handle that fish a little bit better when I put my own input into the rod. Now, this is not a rod where I can just be winding the fish in, you know, super relaxed and stuff like that because this rod will straighten out and you'll lose, you know, like if you lose that bend in the rod, then you've got slack in your line. And with a real fast action rod, it's a lot easier to get slack in your line. But this is, you know, my standard flipping setup. I've got a big five alt straight shank hook in this one. This is, like I said, you match that based on the hook to the rod. This is a very heavy action rod. I know I can handle this, this power of this rod with this hook and it just makes a good, kind of match it all up. It kind of makes a good team together. You wanna have a big hook, big line, all that type of stuff goes together whenever you're matching the rod to the technique. Now, rods can also be a lot about personal preference. You know, I like to flip with a 7.6. Like I said, I like to crank. This is a 7 foot 1. That's just kind of the size rods that I like casting and, and that's easy for me to maneuver with. Some people like to just have 7 footers. Some people like to have 6.9s, 6 6.10s, 6 that have a bunch of those, and that's fine. For me, a good all around rod, like an all around action and power for me, is going to be a 7 foot 3, medium heavy, extra fast. I feel like I can handle the fish a little bit better and the rod's still short enough and light enough that I can make a lot of accurate casts with it. This is the rod I skip docks with a lot. This is the rod that I throw, 
you know, swim jigs on a good bit. I throw even vibrating jigs, spinner baits, all that type of stuff on this rod whenever I want to make super accurate casts and whenever I'm around cover, I want to have this rod because it has a little bit more backbone, even for those moving baits, so I can move that fish away from the cover and stuff like that. But this is just, like I said, a personal preference. If you like a 6'10", that's fine. You can get 6'10s, and maybe your flipping rod will be a 7'3", and then your cranking rod might want to be a 7-footer or whatever it is that you prefer for those applications. But for me, a 7'3", medium-heavy, extra-fast is the, is the optimal one for lots and lots and lots of different scenarios. So again, just want to touch on, kind of re-highlight this stuff. The power of the rod is how much strength it takes to actually load that rod. And like I said, you want to gauge that the power of the rod to the gauge of the hook and the, and the density and the heaviness of the cover that you're fishing. And then the action is actually the, whenever you load that rod, kind of the actual load of the rod and the way it looks is the action of the rod. That's why you wanna have a moderate action rod when you're cranking and you wanna have a fast or an extra fast rod action whenever you're flipping. So that's kind of my breakdown. Try to keep it pretty simple, generalize it. It's all, you just have to understand that what you're trying to do is put together a system for the bait you're using. And that goes for rod, reel, line, action, power, hook, everything is part of a system. And you just want to try to optimize it to the best you can. So that's the rods I use in a very brief summary.